Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation and you know we have talked about the uh, weldability of the different types of the steels like uh, uh, the plain carbon steels, high uh, strength low alloy steels, heat treatable uh, steels and heat resistant steels in form of weldability of chromium molybdenum steels. Now there is one more category of the steel uh, which is frequently welded by both resistance welding processes as well as the arc welding processes. So, we need to see the kind of issues which are associated with the uh, welding of the coated steel or pre-coated steels. So, this is one uh, big category of the steels which is extensively used. So, first of all we will try to understand what these pre-coated steels are, pre-coated steels. Actually uh, the steel which is uh, the um, an alloy of iron and carbon with the presence of other alloying elements. These steels are uh, not uh, uh, very uh, good with regard to the uh, resistance to the environmental exposure in form of like say oxidation and corrosion. So, to enhance the, uh, the oxidation and corrosion resistance of the steels except the stainless steels, uh, these uh, most of the steels having uh, primarily iron, carbon and other alloying elements uh, for strengthening purpose, uh, they uh, such kind of the steels do not offer very good uh, resistance to the oxidation and corrosion. Therefore, in order to improve their resistance to the oxidation and corrosion, the steels are frequently coated with the metals which can offer such kind of the resistance. So, coatings of aluminum or aluminum 8 percent silicon alloy, when coating of either pure aluminum or aluminum 8 percent silicon alloy is made on the steel, it is called aluminized steel. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we can uh, also do the coating of the zinc. Zinc, when the zinc is coated onto the surface of the steels, it is called galvanized steel. So, uh, the aluminized steels offer a uh, very good resistance to the corrosion. While resistance to the oxidation is offered by uh, the galvanized steel. So, these are the two broad categories of the pre coated steels. There are different methods of applying these coatings, but the most commonly used method is hot dipping like the plate or sheet which is or the component which is to be coated with the either aluminum or the zinc. The, in the molten bath of the aluminum or the zinc, the steel component is dipped and then it is taken out to develop the coating of uh, the aluminum or the zinc. Another method is the electroplating. Electro plating. So, electroplating uh, and dipping, hot dipping both are used for, uh, uh, for developing the galvanized steel or for applying the coating of the zinc onto the surface of steel. Uh, when these steels are, uh, are welded, you know like this is one component and this is another component say for example, these are the coated steels. So, surface will have the coating of either aluminum or the zinc. So, for the welding purpose, when the fang surfaces of such steel sheets are fused, the zinc and aluminum will also be, will also be heated and brought to the molten state. So, uh, basically the aluminum and the zinc melting uh, 
uh, when it takes place uh, this interferes with the welding. So, heating uh, and the melting combination of the zinc and aluminum uh, leads to the e interference in welding in different ways. So, this interference of uh, the aluminum and the zinc due to the heating and uh, subsequently in uh, uh, molten state leads to the reduction in the validability of these steel. So, in general if we compare the, the carbon steel with coating and without coating then the coated steels will have the somewhat lower validability than the um, uncoated or the bare uh, carbon steel sheet. So, the what are the ways by which these uh, uh, the, the aluminum or the zinc coating can interfere in welding and so as to reduce the validability. Uh, say the, these are the three different ways, one is like the melting of the aluminum or the zinc leads to the, uh, it interacts with the iron to form the intermetallic compounds which are brittle, low strength and the low ductility. So, these promote cracking. On the other hand, uh, the evaporation, low melting and boiling point metals like zinc, when it evaporates, uh, it leads to the, the porosity and uh, the interaction of the aluminum with the oxygen forms the alumina which appears in form of inclusions. So, these metals lead to the uh, reduction in the uh, uh, mechanical properties, in mechanical properties uh, primarily due to the formation of the intermetallic compounds which are brittle, low ductility, low strength as well as uh, it uh, promotes the discontinuities in form of uh, these elements promote the discontinuities in form of pores and inclusions. So, we need to take care of these issues related with the pre-coated steels welding. Uh, now, coming to the, um, uh, the, the kind of processes which are used, so we will be talking about first the aluminized aluminized steels as i have said these can be coated using the pure aluminum or these can be coated with the aluminum 8% silicon using the hot dipping method so when pure aluminum is, is used it primarily helps in improving the corrosion resistance and when 8% silicon aluminum with 8% silicon alloy is coated it helps to increase the oxidation resistance at a high temperature around around 1200 degree fahrenheit so the high temperature oxidation resistance is improved but if we compare the weld joints of the weld joints or the steel sheets coated with the pure aluminum and the aluminum al silicon alloy, then uh, the aluminum coated steels show better formability than the aluminum silicon alloy coated steels. So, this is one uh, comparison uh, as far as the a pure aluminum and aluminum silicon alloy coated steel is concerned. Uh, now, these can be welded like aluminized steels can be welded using the resistance welding processes like it may be spot welding, it may be seam welding. Uh, but uh, uh, as far as the validability of the, uh, the coated steel is concerned by the resistance welding process, it is similar to that of the bare low carbon steels. 
वट एवर इज दी वैलिडिबिलिटी ऑफ लो कार्बन इज स्टील बाय द रेजिस्टेंस वेल्डिंग प्रोसेसेस द कोटेड स्टील्स आल्सो ऑफर सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ द वैलिडिबिलिटी बट देर आर सम इश्यूज टू अंडरस्टैंड दोज इश्यूज वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड लिटिल बिट अबाउट द रेजिस्टेंस वेल्डिंग प्रोसेस इन द रेजिस्टेंस वेल्डिंग प्रोसेस the electrodes copper electrodes which are water cooled are brought in contact with the surface and then uh, these electrodes are used to apply the pressure and uh, once the the sheets to be joined are in form in contact the current is allowed to flow um, from one side to another so this current generates the heat by i square rt principal since the contact resistance becomes the maximum in conventional resistance welding processes so um, maximum at the interface so maximum heat is generated at the interface and uh, that leads to the softening and uh, the partial melting of the sheets to be joined to develop the nugget and ensure the metallurgical uh, continuity between the sheets or uh, the parts to be joined by the resistance welding process now coming to the 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 aluminized steels since uh, uh, in these cases the aluminum coating is there on both the sides so say uh, this is the sheet coated with the thin layer of the aluminum both the sides and likewise there is another sheet which is also coated with the aluminum so this thin layer of the aluminum will be there at the interface and both the sides will be having the electrodes which will be used to apply the the electrode force and then the current will be allowed to flow uh, from uh, across the sheets to be joined and that uh, will be generating the heat through i square rt principle but in this case since the uh, contact interface uh, in both the sides uh, at the contact interface we have aluminum which is of the uh, higher thermal conductivity and the higher electrical conductivity high electrical conductivity which means electrical resistance is low so in order to generate uh, so if we compare with the bare electro uh, bare uh, sheets where there is no coating of aluminum um, in the case of aluminized steels r value at the interface will be low and that is why uh, the heat uh, which will be generated under the identical conditions of the current and the time values the heat generated will be lower because of the lower resistance value and therefore in order to generate the sufficient amount of the heat at the interface so that uh, the softening and the required partial melting to form the nugget can take place we need to increase to counter the reduction in the value of r we need to increase the current and the weld time the time for which welding will be taking place so in general the kind of welding current which is used and the time for which current is allowed to flow and the electrode pressure which is used to hold the sheets together all are increased so that the required amount of the heat for softening as well as the partial melting can be facilitated so the uh, likewise uh, uh, in case of the seam welding of the aluminized steels also the current and the pressure and the time for which current is allowed to flow all are increased so that the required amount of the heat can be generated in order to produce the sufficient nugget size as well as thermal softening of the metal coming to the arc welding of the aluminized steels uh arc welding of the aluminized steels may be carried out using the sealed metal arc welding process it can also be carried out using the gas metal arc welding process or the gas tungsten arc welding process at the same time it can also uh, means things can also be joined using the soldering processes 
So, uh, but the kind of issues which are related with these uh, uh, processes when the aluminized steel is welded they are different. So, we will be talking about one by one each of uh, these processes when uh, they are used for uh, welding of the aluminized steels. So, uh, say when the shielded metal arc welding process is used, uh, it, we know that since the protection associated uh, with these welding processes of the weld pool from the atmospheric uh, gases is very less because so, so the protection of the molten pool uh, in case of the SMAW process from the atmospheric gases is poor because here the whatever inactive gases are uh, produced they are produced through the thermal decomposition of the coatings available in the flux and they will provide the loose shroud of the inactive protecting gases around the arc as well as the molten pool and therefore protection is poor. So, in order to provide the effective protection basically the basic coated electrodes are used for the welding of the aluminized steels by the SMAW process. But since the protection or the effectiveness of the shielding, shielding of uh, the weld metal from atmospheric gases like oxygen, nitrogen, this is very poor. So, it frequently leads to the interaction of the aluminum with oxygen and nitrogen which in turn leads to the formation of the alumina. Since uh, alumina is a refractory, it does not melt under the arc environmental conditions and uh, this reduces the formation of alumina reduces the wetting of the steel sheet with the molten weld metal. So, molten weld metal uh, and the steel sheet uh, or the portion which has fused the, due to the reduction in the wettability of the molten metal uh, due to the interference by the alumina uh, the weld contour or weld bead geometry this is badly compromised uh, as at the same time the Al2O3 presence of Al2O3 in the weld metal acts as a inclusion. So, uh, weld uh, bead geometry is not poor when it is present in form of inclusions these lower the ductility of the weld joint. So, uh, the basically the formation of the Al2O3 is a major uh, problem as far as the SMAW of the aluminized steel is concerned which in turn lowers the due to the formation of Al2O3 lowers the ductility and uh, the formability of the joint if it is to be carried out. Uh, on the other hand, on the other hand when the G T A W process is used gas tungsten arc welding process is used. Since the gas tungsten arc welding process is the process which offers the cleanest weld means the oxygen and nitrogen content and the hydrogen content in the weld metal is minimum. So, the chances for Al2O3 are very less because of the effective protection which is available with the GTAW process because the shielding is very effective. Uh, the argon is used as a argon or helium is used as a shielding gas, the arc gap is very close, the arc is very stable and that is why the entry of the atmospheric gases in the arc zone is very limited and that is why it produces very clean weld. So, Al2 3, uh, Al2O3 formation is, uh, is significantly reduced and that is why even if the steel is of the rimmed 
uh, or capped type where oxygen is in the higher uh, the concentration of the oxygen in the steel sheet itself a steel sheet of the rimmed or cap type can also be welded effectively using the GTAW process and uh, the aluminum in those cases does not create much problem rather aluminum present acts as a deoxidizer in those cases. So, um, in case of the GTAW aluminized steels do not uh, create much problem. Uh, now, coming to the, uh, the another dimension uh, like the aluminized steel sheets being welded by the GTAW say using the autogenous welding approach where just the faying surfaces are brought to the molten state without adding any filler. Uh, so, in that case whatever is the aluminum that will be retained by the weld metal. Uh, now, we'll, we need to see one very simple thing when the thickness of the sheet is more the aluminum of particular thickness is being used and when we melt its portion the aluminum will be going into the weld metal. But when we use thick sheet, the percentage of aluminum in weld metal is low as compared to the case when aluminum coated thin sheet is welded, the proportion of the aluminum going into the weld metal is much more. Uh, so, the, the aluminized steels when thin sheets are welded in general the aluminum concentration in the weld metal is high as compared to the case when the aluminized steel sheets of thick greater thicknesses are welded by autogenous welding process then uh, the aluminum concentration in the weld metal is less. Higher concentration of the aluminum greater than 1 percent in weld metal since aluminum does not uh, dissolve in the iron it forms the brittle aluminum iron aluminum intermetallic compounds. So, the formation of the brittle aluminum iron intermetallic compounds reduces the ductility, reduces the strength, reduces the formability of the uh, of the welded sheets. So, uh, we need to we need to look into this aspect also like how much uh, the aluminum is getting into the weld metal uh, especially in case of the autogenous welds. So, greater is the thickness of the sheet uh, lesser will be the, uh, the weight percentage of the aluminum in the weld metal that will be there. On the other hand, uh, if uh, the coating thickness is very limited or coating thickness is more. So, thin coated aluminum of greater thickness in form of coating will be leading to the greater percentage of the aluminum in the weld metal and that will be more uh, troublesome as far as the uh, reduction in ductility and uh, um, reduction in the formability is concerned. On the other hand, when we talk of the GMAW process, G GMAW process is a very uh, different process as compared to that of the GTAW process, where the, the filler we, uh, are in form of electrode will be developing the arc, it will be generating the heat. So, at the same time the electrode will also be melting and getting transferred into the weld metal. Advantage of this is that whatever aluminum is coming from the, the base metal due to the fusion that will be diluted by the 
aluminum which is coming or uh, the, the diluted by the electrode material which is coming due to the consumption of the electrode during the welding process. So, as a result of this the weld metal uh, composition is being modified by the, the electrode. At the same time whatever metal is coming from the electrode uh, that will be diluting the aluminum percentage in the weld metal. So, the dilution of the aluminum due to the addition of the metal from the electrode will be reducing the concentration of the aluminum in the weld metal and therefore, in case of the GMAW process uh, the, uh, the, the problems associated with the aluminum are reduced significantly. There is a no problem of the reduction in the ductility, reduction in the formability of the, the aluminized steel weld joints prepared by the GMAW process. But uh, since the effectiveness of the shielding associated with the GMAW process is not as good as that of the GTAW, so if we, if we, if we lose the protection of the weld metal from the atmospheric gases, then it can lead to the formation of the Al2O3, it may reduce the uh, wetting of the molten metal, it may reduce the ductility and the formability of the weld joint. So, effective protection of the weld metal from the atmospheric gases is needed in order to avoid the adverse effects. Apart from this, since in case of the GMAW process, when we are using argon as a shielding gas, frequently we would like to add the oxygen and the carbon dioxide, maybe like 20 to 30 percent, so that the arc stability is improved and that in turn will be helping in providing the effective protection to the weld metal. Now, coming to the joining of uh, the aluminized steels by shouldering, uh, here the presence of the alumina because wherever aluminum coating is there, it will be forming the oxide in form of alumina. So, we need to do away with this alumina or aluminum coating and to take care of the alumina and aluminum coating uh, basically the mechanical and chemical cleaning there after dipping of the aluminized steel in 5 percent tri sodium phosphate solution, thereafter the rinsing in water and drying of the seat and uh, after this uh, the seats to be joined by the shouldering. Uh, very high uh, speed heating methods are used like uh, uh, electric or ultrasonic soldering irons uh, uh, providing the required faster heating so that uh, the aluminum does not get time to get oxidized during the heating. So, the main idea here is to apply the faster heating methods so that quickly uh, the, the required soldering temperature can be realized and uh, uh, suitable shoulders can be used to develop uh, the shoulder the joint at the interface. So, cleaning is basically key in aluminized uh, steel soldering thereafter faster heating and then application of the shoulders for uh, developing the shoulder joints. Now, I will summarize this presentation. In this presentation, I have talked about the pre-coated steels and uh, the validability aspects of the aluminized uh, steels. We know that aluminum uh, creates some trouble in welding of the uh, aluminized steels uh, in both the cases in uh, like uh, the fusion welding processes as well as the resistance welding processes. Thank you for your attention. Music